The following is intended only for mature audiences. Viewer discretion advised. Hello, welcome to the Fat Ugly Toad Show with Blue Hands. I'm your host, the Fat Ugly Toad. Today I will be unboxing a cool toy I had to have, despite the risks. I covered the box label. It came from a location with no known occurrences, but was delivered by someone working in a filthy s-hole of a city with over 3,000 cases and 200 deaths. So, I'm more wary of the box it arrived in than the contents. Capitalism is unsustainable and the growth model will kill us all and being a consumer is foolish and it should all fall away and from the ashes should rise which should also be torn down and blah blah blah. I wanted a cool toy. I researched this toy when the auction only had two hours left and I thought it was pretty great. So I paid the opening bid of $19.95 plus free shipping, and I won the auction. To me, that's a lot of money for a new toy, but I hadn't bought a toy since February, so I deserved something expensive and nice. Let's look at the box I won't be keeping real quick before I recycle it. Yes, indeed. I grabbed myself a brand new Lexibook Zeus. I happen to like Lexibook. I understand that they get smacked around a lot by game snobs who think sarcasm is automatically comedy, and I will be the first to admit that Lexibook doesn't always poop products made of solid gold, but I do love my Lexibook Compact Cyber Arcade. 100% fashionable. I admit that the Zeus looks good, but I don't care for that word, and I'm not looking to fashion my Zeus into anything else. I know that's not what they meant. I don't buy a toy because it's stylish, do I? I just want the games inside, don't I? Honestly, I think of the entire fashion industry and everyone in it suddenly vanished without a trace, my life would personally be affected not at all. But I suppose that's a rude thing to say, and children all over the world are gainfully employed because of the fashion industry. So, that's something, I guess. Anyway, let's see what's inside this box. A manual. Yay! Speaking of child labor, <laughs> I hope your parents shared the money with you, kid. I'm just kidding. I doubt Lexibook sprung for a model. That's probably Trina from the accounting department's kid or something. I scanned the manual for anyone interested. Pause at any time. Lexibook threw in an addendum page, so the manual isn't accurate anyway. No sense in reprinting it, I guess. Why let an inaccurate manual go to waste? Oh no, the Lexibook curse. I too am vomiting sarcasm as bad humor. Page one is apparently the inner cover, and page two is page one. A picture with a button and a function diagram. Helpful if accurate. A game list with control explanations. Nice. I actually appreciate that. Because of this list, I'll be keeping my manual. And the last two pages. The back cover is blank. Okay, what else? One of the scrawniest audio video cables I have yet to see. It's six feet in length. And the device itself. Quite fashionable.
I actually do like it. Chromed buttons look nice, but chromed plastic will soon show wear. Just ask a Micronaut time traveler if you don't believe me, but if I wear the paint off, I can customize it, so it's all good. It's about the games and the gameplay. It's old even though it's new old stock, so the screen is small, but the unit is tiny, so they actually packed in as much screen as it would honestly hold. The wrist strap can only be removed by taking the device apart or cutting the cord. See? The battery cover does have a screw, but like my LexiBook Compact Cyber Arcade, the screw is optional. Points for that. Okay. So, I cleaned up the mess I made and sanitized and tested the device, hence the balloonless hands. Time to remove the screen protector. And the lanyard. And the battery cover screw. and this ugly sticker. Now I own it, no returning it, but I have no regrets so far. It's primarily black, so it's difficult to see in a video. I will stagger images with camera flashed images. The power button and D-pad. a front-facing speaker. Buttons with a circle symbol and a square symbol, each with turbo buttons. Reset button. Pause button. Volume wheel on the left-hand side. The top has both an audio video out and a headphone out. In my experience, that's rare to see. My IKEA rechargeable AAA batteries fit just fine and work just fine. The screen looks great, but the audio video out actually works, so I can show you the games with my video capture device. In real life, the screen looks great. I am aware that more modern tiny screens now exist, but I personally have no complaints about the screen. Playing the device at an angle could be tricky, but why would you ever do that? The power button has to be held down a few seconds to power the device on or off. I would prefer an on off off switch, but if you accidentally touched it in the heat of a game, it won't turn everything off. Let's check out the games. The menu is one basic page of the included 20 games with no annoying background music. Perfect, in my opinion. When a device has tons and tons of games and multitudes of pages or streaming or menus or options, etc, etc, I find myself looking around a lot and not actually playing video games, which is what I set out to do when I turned it on. I have the same problem with streaming television stuff. Okay, 20 games. Plenty. I paid a dollar a game. Let's see if it was worth it. Deep Storm. This game looks impressive in my opinion. It's okay. I'm not a big fan of 3D. Tiger Rescue. This game is awesome. Intense up with a great look. It's edge of your seat at every moment and very difficult. I'll show more of it at the end. Pinball Fish Underwater Breakout slash Arkanoid. Great game in my opinion. 
What's next? The Lost World. Kind of a Frogger slash Pac-Man sort of maze-ish something. It's okay. No background music on a lot of these. I'm okay with that because I can enjoy my own music collection that way. For this video, I will play some new Orbiting Spy in the background unless the game has its own music. Jewel Fever 2. I don't know what became of Jewel Fever 1. Not bad. Looks good, and it's fun. Pool Pro. It's a pool video game. It looks nice. I don't enjoy pool in any form, but I might try it later. If no kids allowed real life mini golf courses existed, I would enjoy that once in a while. I guess that's kind of what pool is, but mini golf is more fun. Golf itself and anyone involved in it can burst into flames if you ask me. They should turn graveyards into golf courses. Combine the two wastes of land and space into one. Dream Bubble. Dream Bubble is a Tetris and it's a welcome addition. It has its own slight variations and it looks nice. What's also cool is you can choose special mode and the bubbles float up. Upside down Tetris. Final Escape This one is okay I guess. I should probably learn to play it before I film it for it. I should probably learn to play it before I film it for YouTube. I like the little dinosaur. I don't like the timer. Busy Bong. Mine isn't so busy anymore, but when I was in middle school, that bong was very, very busy. Easy please, like Sunday morning. Thank you. It's a push the boxes game. I don't like games that have a timer. Odd title for a push the boxes game. Make way. This one I might need to consult the manual about. I have no clue what it's asking of me. It looks nice and might be fun. It has bad background music though. Moving on. Magic Jelly. This is sort of a Qbert kind of thing, I think. Qbert melts my brain because it's all diagonal, but the controls are not. 
So, this is probably better for my brain. I guess the enemies so far are a snail and piglet. You have to change direction in advance. You can't turn in midair. The music is bad. This is a legit little game though. What's next? Lucky Q. I need to consult the manual on this one. And I haven't. Let's see. Hmm. An orange guy running? Maybe I'll pick up this pink rock? I'll bash him in the head with this pink rock. No, he's still alive. Clearly, I should shove this up his butt. The music is great. It's like an Old West saloon. Plumber. Plumber is a well-crafted platformer, but it doesn't control well. It controls a bit like Mega Man. You run out of ammo though. I think it'll be worth getting used to and spending some time with. Caddy. Classic Lexi Book Soundtrack. Sort of a match the colored balls sort of thing, I think. You have a cheerleader. I'm sure it amps up to insanely difficult. Too bad it has a timer. Mr. Onion. This looks just like Mr. Potato on my Polaroid plug and play. Yep. Same game, slightly graphically different, slightly. A simple no jumping, shoot only, Donkey Kong sort of thing. Grab all the keys, rescue the girl in the cage. Repeat on different levels. It's not great. Might be fun to try and beat though. The latter behavior isn't right. Get the meat, spelled M-E-E-T. As a caveman, you throw the slowest tomahawk in the universe and travel through lettered dungeons in search of food. It's not great. Bubble Blaster
Classic Lexi Book. I like this game. Not much to it. Match 3, turret shooter. Always a welcome addition on a handheld if you ask me. Super Move Quest. Speaking of Match 3, a classic Match 3. Awesome. I like Match 3. Great for zoning out and letting your brains liquefy and run out of your ears. Kind of like TV is. Seek the resources. This is a weird Pac-Man style maze game with tanks along the sides on train tracks that shoot at you. It's harder than it looks and I kind of like it. Not bad. Find the way. This game is warped and twisted and sick. I don't like it at all and won't be playing it beyond this demonstration. Tiger Rescue is the star of the show. This is awesome. It's insanely hard. Thanks for watching. I post every Thursday and usually more often than that. Please like, sub, bell, share. Comments are welcome. I think that's Mort's cousin. I really like my Lexibook Zeus. I highly recommend it. The controls are very tiny and take some getting used to, 
but are very responsive. Diagonals, for example, are no problem. I strongly feel like I got my money's worth. I will say, however, I don't think it's ever wise to buy a handheld in the hopes of having a plug and play. More often than not, the AV out doesn't work correctly or at all. It's just luck when they do. I don't think they even QC them. Thanks again. <laughs>